Hey, what is up everybody? Rafalente Hero here. Welcome back to the channel and to the first official review video of the year. Today, we're going to talk about none other than the Honda TMX 125 Alpha. So when reality hit me last year that I wasn't going to be able to afford a brand new car for the foreseeable future, I immediately shifted my focus into finding my first brand new motorcycle. Most motorcycles nowadays look like robots to the point that I call them transformers and that's what initially turned me off about them at the beginning and that's why I prefer the car. I was looking for a classic motorcycle that is affordable and perfect for a beginner to learn with. A motorcycle that I can grow with. I am a first time rider after all. Not only do modern motorcycles look overkill, they also cost upwards of 65000 And most of them are going to be automatic which means a beginner rider like me would learn absolutely nothing from owning it. That being said, I scoured the internet for the most affordable, classic looking motorcycles with manual transmission. And that's how I found the Honda TMX 125 Alpha. And I gotta be honest, this motorcycle is like a hidden gem. Nobody's talking about it except for the people that are in the Facebook groups and the YouTube channels that modify using the Honda TMX 125 as a base bike for like cafe racers, scramblers, bobbers, all kinds of motorcycles. This is my way of letting the world know that this could be the perfect beginner bike. So I have owned this bike for more than a year now and I gotta say I'm very happy with it. It has surpassed my expectations. With that being said, let's talk about the specs. So this is the Honda TMX 125. It's already one year in use and it still looks fine. Good washing comes a long way guys. So let's start with the front. You can see the headlights, the speedometer, odometer gauge, you can see the front part of it. When you turn on the ignition, it's going to automatically turn on and it, it is yellow. And these are the signal lights. These are absolutely helpful because they are big and it's a classic look so I don't mind that. So this is the Honda logo along with the horn. Because it doesn't have a storage box, I added a saddlebag and we're going to talk about that but this is a classic saddlebag for like classic motorcycles. And then you can see we're gonna have metal front fender. Yeah, it, it has some dents because of one year of use and I am a first time rider last year. Those are to be expected and it is gray or maybe it is silver in color. And then we're gonna go to the tire. So that is the front tire. Uh, it is perfect for tricycles if you want to put a sidecar on it. Actually, for my personal preference, I would have like a dual sport tire. And it is MBP Star, which is like the default tire for the Honda TMX 125 Alpha. It is a size 18 rim. Kind of difficult to find. It's a little bigger than most. We have the mirrors. I don't have a problem with the mirrors, but at times where I, you know, move the motorcycle, it keeps moving like this moving like this so it's kind of bit annoying to adjust it every single time and we have the clutch this is the clutch for the motorcycle it is manual and I believe that was the best for me as a beginner rider to learn how to really drive and this is the lights this is low beam high beam signal left signal right and you have to put that in the middle so that it doesn't keep on signaling and then misleading the vehicles behind you and this is the horn this motorcycle has things lacking and that's why for the cheap price but you can easily add you know accessories like this it's pretty affordable it's a it's a smartphone holder and you can attach it to your lights so that when you do turn it on you can charge right here there's a port somewhere there let's go here this is the panel this is for the revs and this is for the speed. The odometer is right here. This is good for a beginner like me because I need numbers to like indicate which gear I'm in. So the size really helps. But like in the future, I would like a circular little classic speedometer instead of a big one. This is the key, key slot ignition. I have actually an issue right now with this. And when I turn it on, it doesn't quite get the lights going. So you have to like find spot that it does. Another mirror for the right. So same issue with the other one, it keeps moving when I move the motorcycle. And this is the front brake. This has actually a lot of power in it, so I would suggest using it with purpose. This is the rev or the gas. When you rev this up, the motorcycle goes forward. 
this is the electric start that's it right and what you will find is the lights turn on signal left it is showing there and then let's move it to the right there it is beautiful classic all right so that's it if we want to rev all right okay turn off the signal that's it so let's go to the tank the tank is very minimal and the, the color is absolutely gorgeous it's matte gray simple honda logo it is black which i love if you don't know that's my favorite color and it has a capacity of 8.6 liters which is more than most of like the basic motorcycles so you can really pack a lot of gas in this and as you can see here this is actually the clutch when you press the clutch over here it actually moves right here and then this is the kickstart i actually use this more often nowadays because i have an issue with the ignition and the electric it is still working absolutely fine when it does run so this is the rear brake so that attaches to here at the rear side of the motorcycle and this is the peg where you can step on so let's go to the other side of it so this is like the reserve fuel that i was talking about so i don't know if it's on right now but i will navigate through it so there's two settings and so it can go up and it can go down so i think you have to turn it up but i have i had it turned up again the engine and this is the shifter it's not, it's not one of those confusing configurations. If you want to shift up, press this. If you want to shift down, press this. So it's very straightforward and that is why it's one of the perfect ones for the beginners. This is the battery cover and I believe the battery is somewhere here. And this is the cover for the chain. Some people remove this part because they like modify. And then we have the kickstand. My kickstand is actually very rusty because this is the one which I use the most and this is the center stand and I just use this you know once in a while but when I upgrade to like a bigger tire I am gonna use more of the side stand or maybe I'm gonna buy a longer one and this is the the peg for the passenger if you have somebody that wants to go with you that is perfect for that remove it and put it back on now moving to the top part this is the seat as you can see, this is not the original seat. This is modified to be classic, like one of those cafe racers. And that is because uh, I got into a minor accident and then I ripped through the original one. So I just decided to convert it. It's one of those upholsteries. They can absolutely do the job. All right, so now this is the rear shock. It's actually dual, one on this side, one on the other. It actually keeps me bouncing around unnecessarily. So this is the rear tire and I, I absolutely love this because it kind of looks like an off-road already. And the size is 2.75.18. Again, MVP Star, Japan Technology, that is the default for the Honda TMX 125. And I have absolutely no problem with this. This is the rear fender made of metal. If we're talking about budget-friendly modifications, we don't really need to modify that one. On the back, we have the rear signal lights this is for left this is for right this is the brake light when you do press the brake it will light up red this is my plate number we're gonna talk about the muffler right here a new design it used to be one singular metal design but it, they modified it to be this way and it has two colors now i want to talk about the big elephant in the room it is the big storage box that i added and because the honda tmx 125 is a basic bike doesn't have storage it does have a storage rack where you can attach storage boxes like one of those in grab food food panda and then it's actually 81 liters or 63 i'm not really sure but it does have insulation and it is quite easy to install you don't really need much besides some zip ties and i have my stuff right here so that is the specs of my motorcycle and let's get it on and of course with all the things that makes it great there are things that this motorcycle is lacking or it can be improved upon so like i mentioned earlier aesthetics let's start with the speedometer odometer gauge it's very big, it's rectangular, it's perfect for a beginner motorcyclist. But when I get more experience and I'm gonna upgrade it to a circular, smaller speedometer, the headlights specifically. The brake light, it depends, but definitely the speedometer, the headlight, 
and the mirrors. So for me, aesthetically, they have to be some sort of circular like the cafe racer and to add with the mirror a little bit of adjustment the mirrors move like this and i got i have to adjust it every time i get on the bike as for the handlebar it could be a little bit wider than it is i actually like it for a beginner because it's really relaxed but you know in the future i would like to have a scrambler type of a handlebar uh, a little bit wider like this and for the tire the front tire for me, I have to change it to a dual sport along with a fender. Like it's really outdated. <laughs> I know I said classic, but like we we can still have classic, but like aesthetic. And also, there are things that this motorcycle is lacking, namely storage. So that's why I added storage box. This is about 63 to 81 liters. I'm not sure as of recording this video. And also, at the front, I added this saddlebag for added storage for like ORCR, my, a photocopy of my driver's license, and so on and so forth. Another thing about the gauge is it doesn't have a fuel gauge. So you will have to like do the classic way of like shaking the motorcycle so that you know how much fuel it has. You can gauge it that way. So that's a very like old school way to do it. So those are just the aesthetics. But let's get on to the actual riding. So the Honda Team X125 has one of the most sensitive clutch, free plays. It has only a few mm of free play that when you go past it unknowingly because it's so sensitive, the motorcycle is going to jump, the motorcycle is going to turn off or both. And it, that can lead for a beginner rider to have like minor accidents, minor slips, minor setbacks, if you will. So definitely that's why you see the dents on my front fender. And that's why I changed my seat to a classic one that I customized because I tore through it. And for me, I have an issue right now with the ignition. When I turn the key, I have to find that little spot where it turns on, my lights turn on, and I can use the electric start. But that for me is actually my fault. It's because that I actually leave it when it's raining. I don't immediately take it to the garage or take it inside my house. So that's on me. If you actually take care of your motorcycle and don't do that, I don't think that's gonna be a problem for you. But the good news is the parts of the Honda motorcycle are like universal. So you can just find them at your local Honda dealership or maybe off market, Shopee, Lazada, wherever. Now that I got you interested, you might be wondering about the price. The Honda Team X125 is one of the most affordable motorcycles out there. When I saw the post, I actually saw it on Facebook. That's why I said it was a hidden gem because I actually find, found it on Facebook, not on the Google. It only costs about upwards of 50000 Mine, my unit in the local dealership was about 54000 if you if you loaned it, which I did. And the down payment, depending on where you find it, it's usually 2500 to 4000 my local dealership had it at 4000 but I actually paid more than that. I paid 7500 because I want the installment to be just less than 2500 per month. Mine's 2400 2375 So for me, that's really affordable. And I want to talk about pricing. There are smartphones right now that cost more than this motorcycle. Namely, the newest iPhones, right? They cost more than this motorcycle. This is 54000 New smartphones nowadays range for 100000 So imagine, you can already have two of these for like one smartphone. So it's very affordable. And for a beginner motorcycle, yes, the clutch can be risky. But like you're going to really learn how to drive, which I did. One year using this, I can absolutely say it's very smooth. Now I could go on here all day talking about how good this motorcycle is but it's not as good if we have a demo. So let's hop on the Honda TMX and let's get going. So uh, we're gonna hop on to the motorcycle. Yep. And then if you're a beginner rider, don't ever forget about this, this the kickstand. Always remove that. And we're gonna start the motorcycle. And this is the issue that I was talking about earlier. When I turned this on, it wouldn't turn on. So you can see that it wouldn't turn on. So you have to find that little green spot right there. It does turn on. So we can start with the electric start. So that's absolutely perfect. But if we can't, we can use the kick start. There we go. It wasn't that perfect, but it did the, did the trick. 
as much as possible, we want to start with the green light on. So we want to find that low spot and then electric start and we're good to go. We have to shift into first gear. Yeah, we're gonna have a test run at the highway. This is Escalante everybody, welcome. So that's what you can see guys. I'm on third gear right now. Let's let's see how fast this baby can go. Fourth gear, I forgot to turn off my lights. Let's go like this. I'm gonna drive through the highway. After a year of driving it actually feels pretty smooth. Actually smoother than when I first bought it. So if it's like this, you want to have at least a distance of one vehicle, downshift, downshift another, and then downshift once more. I'm back to the first gear. Let's go. We're on third gear right now. I'm actually pretty sick right now, but like, let's get this recording going. Back to second gear, guys. There's a big ass drop. Don't want to bump into that. Let's turn left here. So that is my review of the Honda TMX125 Alpha. What do you guys think? Hit in the comments below. I believe perfect beginner motorcycle. It's classic looking, it's manual. The disadvantage of a minimum clutch free play actually plays in the favor of learning, which means you're gonna be an expert driver. And this is definitely a bike that you can grow with. So that is it for me, Rafalente Hero. Subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Peace out.